I'm Richard Brown from the Mississippi Entomological Museum at Mississippi State University. Today we're going to start a series of presentations on the larvae, beginning with the first presentation here on some of the important characters, especially the ketotaxi and crochets of larvae that are important for identification. We will talk about the morphology of the larva overall, the patterns of crochets, the cetal maps or ketotaxi, and the general placement of CD in Lepidoptera. A caterpillar shown here will have usually three thoracic legs that are segmented. We see CD on the larva that sometimes are on panacula or sclerotized spots around the bases of the CD. We have four pairs of abdominal prolegs and one pair at the end of the larva. The head of the larva is usually hyponathus, that is, the mouth parts are directed downward. However, some leaf miners and stem borers have mouth parts directed forward or pronathus. The epicranial suture, shown as this red line, is short in internal feeders but long in external feeders. We see two red lines. The wide red line is the ecdysal line and the narrow red line is the adfrontal suture. If this is colored in, we see an inverted V that is characteristic of the Lepidoptera. Some Coleoptera have an inverted V, but only with one line instead of two lines. There are six stomata on the Lepidoptera head. The stomata are different from ocelli. The ocelli on the heads of adults, but in larva they are termed stomata. These can be reduced in number in some leaf miners. In looking at the sawfly in Hymenoptera, they have prolegs too. The prolegs don't have crochets, but they only have one ocellus on the head. The larval head has several CT of importance, uh, especially for identification at the species level, and we will not go into the various types of CD uh, on the head, but these can be found diagrammed in various books on larvae. We see the mouth parts here at the bottom of the right image, and if we look at this with scanning electron microscopy, we have the labrum in the middle, top, the antenna to the right, the maxilla, and the labial. These are the important mouth parts. However, there is an internal hypopharynx that has spines and characteristic uh, dentitions that are useful for identifying species. The antenna has three segments, just like the adult. Although in the adult, the third segment is often sub-segmented to form flagellomeres. Here we see three segments with the third one being rather small. They bear sincilla for detection of chemo uh, chemicals in the air and also some of them may be tactile. The maxilla also bears various types of sincilla. We see here the palpus on the left and the galea on the right. The galea forms the proboscis in the adult, and the labium includes the spinneret. The spinneret is absent in some of the primitive moths. Typically, it's long and boring larvae that are internal feeders and short in leaf miners. The spinneret is unusual because it's connected to a labial gland. We typically think of the spinneret as spinning silk. However, it has many other functions, including oxidases for uh, microbial control. The salivary glands or labial glands can be very long, up to three times the length of the body of the caterpillar. The <clears throat> thorax has segmented legs in most species, but they're absent in some leaf miners. We have spiracles on the first thoracic segment, or sometimes it's between the first and second thoracic segment. The prothorax often has a sclerotized shield. Again, this can be diagnostic, whereas the meso and metathorax is unsclerotized. The prolegs are reduced or lost in many groups. A prime example, the geometrids. The prolegs are absent on three, four, and five abdominal segments and present only on the sixth and anal segment. Thus, when they 
move on a stem, they move forward in these loops. It's quite distinctive to see what a geometrid larva walk. Many noctuids have prolegs lost on the abdominal third or fourth segment, and these also have a looping behavior. On the prolegs are small hooks we call crochets that are aid for grasping the substrate. Crochets have different arrangements. You can have some with one row or uniserial, or they can be multiserial, having one row after the other on the proleg. Ordination refers to the length of the crochets. If they're uniordinal, as in the bottom left, then they are the same length. Biordinal, two lengths. Triordinal, three lengths. They can be arranged in a complete circle. They can be in bands, as on the bottom left, somewhat parallel bands. They can be in a penellipse, in which the circle is broken on one side. And sometimes they can be found in a series, either a meso series or lateral series. And this is characteristic of some of the important families that we will be covering. The crochets in meso series can be the same length across all all of the crochets on the leg, proleg, or they can be abruptly longer in the middle, and this is called heterodius. The anal crochets are often different from the abdominal ones. For example, here with the graphalita, we see the abdominal uh, crochets in a circle, but if we look at the anal segment, we see them in a half circle. There's also, in this particular species and in many other tortricids, an anal fork between the crochets that uh, is present in some can be diagnostic and it's involved in tossing the fecal pellet aside. CD can be primary or secondary. In all larvae, the CD that are present in the first instar are the primary CD. In some caterpillars, in various families, additional CD can be added after the first instar. And with each moat, additional CD can be named. Even with the secondary CD, the primary CD are present but cannot be identified in the later instars. Ketotaxi is the naming system we use for the primary CD. The ketotaxi that we used follows the terminology of Hinton. However, if you look at some references uh, before 1950, there's other types of naming systems that exist. And in uh, some books, such as the Stairs volume on immature insects, the various systems are compared. But we are using the Hinton system for ketotaxi. When you see a figure in Stair or many other books on larvae, you often see T1, referring to the first thoracic segment, being illustrated by itself. But T2 and 3, the second and third segments, are grouped together because they're similar. Likewise. A1 and A2 are separate, but A3 to 6 are similar, and so there's one segment to represent all of those. Then we have segments for 7, 8, 9, and 10, and these can differ considerably between the various segments. And looking at the types of CD, here in red you see the dorsal group, D1 and D2. In this figure, this is one side of a larva. If it were cut down the middle and flattened, these would be the CD you would see. On the opposite side would, of course, be the other D1 and other D2 that's not visible in this figure. In some uh, species on the prothorax, there can be an extra dorsal one towards the anterior side. Dorsal one, dorsal two. The subdorsal groups are those at the uh, ventral part that uh, are shown here in the red above the spiracle. The lateral group is on the side of the larva near the spiracle. In some cases, one or more of the CD can be uh, widely spaced from the others. In the Microlepidoptera, the so-called Microlepidoptera, they're the small moths, there are typically three L group CD. In Pyroloidea, and the Macrolepidoptera, including the Noctuoids and Saturnids and others, there are two or one CD in front of the spiracle. The subventral group on the pro prothorax has two CD. The second and third thoracic segments have one, 
and the abdomen can have anywhere from one to three. And then lastly, the ventral group, V1, is on the venter of the body between the coxa. The panacula, the sclerotis areas around the base of the CD can be modified. Sometimes they're elevated into a cone shape with bearing one seta. Sometimes they are larger and they have many CD coming from the same expanded panaculum. Here are some useful references that uh, you will uh, be using if you're trying to identify larvae, either the book by, edited by Stair, Fred Stair, or Lep Intercept keys, and there are other available keys that will be mentioned later that can be used for identification. Are there any questions?